Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss data governance. But first we need to discuss data and what is the source of the data and now we have this term big data. Where is this data coming from? Well, the rise of data is driven by advancement in technology, such as the use of smartphone and internet connected devices, the growth of the internet and social media. Anywhere you click, you make a comment, you like something, that is data collected by these social media companies or internet companies that is recording this data and trying to make a decision based on your behavior. This led to the importance of data management and data governance for achieving business success. So your usage of the internet, you think Facebook is free. Yes, you are using Facebook for free. However, they're collecting the data to learn about you as an individual, as well as you and profiling you and millions of other users to be able to market product and services to you. The aim of data governance is to transform large and filtered pool of data into some sort of a structured, useful data that can be used to solve business problem. So think about all the clicks, the likes, the visitation of pages, how long you stay on a certain page, what time you visited, who are your friends, who did you speak to, where did you comment? All of this taken together is unfiltered pulled of data. It's a bunch of data that don't make any sense. The key is to turn it into a structured data where it becomes useful and it's being used for business decision. So business process generates data. When you use the internet, it's going to generate data. Then what we're going to do, we're going to take this data and we're going to use data governance, management and analysis to turn this data into a valuable business insight. And it would look something like this. We have a business. The business generates data by, you, by the users. When you buy from them, visit their website, uh, check out their product. Then this data, it's going to help the business create insight and create business, help the business create business decision. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So simply put, what is go data governance? Well, data governance is the overall management, availability, usability, and integrity, as well as the security of data used in the organization. Because data is important, we wanna make sure it's available to us, it's useful to us, it has integrity, and it's secure. This includes what? How do you achieve all of these? Well, you have to establish policies and procedures for collecting the data, storing the data, using and protecting, as well as creating roles and responsibilities for individuals and group within the organization who are responsible for managing the data. And this is what data governance is. And what is the goal of all of this? Well, the goal of all of this is to make sure the data is accurate, consistent, and accessible, whoever needs this data, and also being protected from unauthorized use. And the overall purpose is for business decision. So why do we have data governance? Yes, we want to protect the data. Yes, we want to have accurate data, but we want to use this data to make a better decision. Now, data governance is not an easy topic in the real world. We do face challenges in collecting the data, maintaining the data, filter, filtering the data. So we're gonna look at data challenges, data governance challenges, and we'll look at some mitigation, what companies can do. The following are data governance challenges, data silos, data quality, data security, data compliance, data privacy, data governance structure, data governance automation and scalability. So I'm gonna have this list and every time I have a list, I'm gonna go through each term in this list separately to understand, to explain what that terms mean. Starting with what are data silos? Data silos refer to the isolated storage of data in different departments, system, and platform within organization. A silos is when you have different unit separated, separated within a company. This is what data silos is. 
This can make it difficult to establish a centralized view of the organizational data, as well as to ensure consistency, accuracy across different data structure or data sources. Why? Because each unit or each department maintain their data separately, so there is no uniform, there is no consistency across the data. This could be a challenge to govern the data. So when data is stored in silos, it means each department store their own data separately in a different way, it's difficult to manage, maintain, and ensure the quality of the data. Also, siloed data can make it difficult to share information across different departments and teams, which can lead to inefficiency and delays. Well, what do we need to do to tackle this challenge, this data silos? Well, they can implement a data governance framework that include guidelines, processes, and tools for collecting, storing, and managing the data. So basically, everyone is on, on the same page. This include data governance console that tells everybody what they need to be responsible for, data stewardship roles. For example, in each department, we will have a person saying, you are responsible of this data and you're supposed to share the data with the other silo. Data governance committee to help ensure consistency and coordination across different data sources because data could be in different places in the, in the organization and with different people. Also, the organization can use data management and integration, basically somehow, integrated electronically to help bring the data together and create a single view of the data's organ of the single view of the organization's data the key here is the data is in a separate silos we want to make sure it's all integrated so we can see the full picture the second challenge of data is data quality what is data quality ensuring the accuracy and completeness of the data this is what makes the data uh, has a good quality. This could be challenging, especially when the data being collected from many multiple sources. So data quality issues can result from a variety of factor. Well, starting from data entry. If the data entry is incorrect, your data is no good. Maybe the data is missing. Maybe the, da the data is inconsistent or the data could be out of date. All of this will create poor data. And what would poor data do? Poor data would lead to a variety of issues, incorrect analysis or decision-making, inefficiencies, delays, as well as reputational and financial risk. So poor data is really expensive. Okay, why? Because it's going to lead to poor decisions, poor business decision. What should the company do to mitigate or tackle this challenge? Well, they can implement a data quality management process. For example, they can do what's called data profiling, data validation, and data cleaning cleansing let's see what these are what's data profiling involve analyzing the data to identify patterns and potential issues basically profiling something just to see what it looks like make a profile about this data while validation data validation involve checking the data against a set of rules to to ensure it meets certain standard so we receive the data we want to make sure it's good we have to compare it to something else that makes sense data cleansing basically cleaning the data it means removing or correcting any inaccuracies or consistencies in the data. Sometimes the data is not complete. We want to make sure it is complete or whatever. There is data that's really useless. It doesn't make any sense. We need to correct it and take it out. Also, the company can est establish a data quality governance role, such as a data quality manager, someone who is responsible for making sure the data has quality, checking the data, data quality stewards to help ensure that data quality is consistent, monitored, and maintained. Another important aspect to consider is to have a clear understanding of the data lineage. What we mean by the data lineage, it means the history of the data. What does that mean? It means where is the data coming from? What is the source of the data? And where is it stored? Okay, where it came, where it's coming from? What's the original source? Where did we store it? This will help us understand the data and its quality, as well as to identify and correct any issues that might arise. If we know the source, we can go back to the source and check the data. Another issue with data, obviously, is data security. And what does security deals with? Protecting the data from unauthorized use or breaches. Well, that's always a challenge, especially when we have constant cyber attacks these days. Why? Because data breaches can result in lost theft of sensitive information, which could lead to reputational damage, financial losses, legal penalties. What can the company do? Well, they can have data security measures such as data encryption. They can encrypt the data. We'll talk about this later on. Access control it means who can or cannot access the data. And we'll talk about access control much, much more in details later on. We have physical, we have logical, 
and security monitoring. What is data encryption real quick? Data encryption means use an algorithm to scramble data. So in case somebody found it, they cannot read it. It's unreadable to unauthorized parties because they don't have the keys to unscramble this data. What is access control? Setting up rules and procedures for who can access and use the data using login and monitoring access. We'll talk about that later on, as well as data encryption. Security monitoring invo involving tools and techniques to detect and response to security threat in real time. And this is, we're talking about cybersecurity, and we'll talk about that later on in a different session. Organization can also establish security governance role. Someone in charge of data security, such as the chief information security officers. Also, we have data security managers to help ensure that data security is consistent, monitored, and maintained. Another important aspect to consider is to have a comprehensive comprehensive data governance policy that include identification of sensitive data. So we need to know which one is sensitive data, which one is important data. So we're going to treat sensitive data with data that's not really as sensitive or as important. Okay, the classification of data and the definition of security measures should be applied to it. If this is sensitive data, basically secret, top secret or not a secret information, we need to know what are we dealing with? This will help ensure that the appropriate security measures are in place to protect sensitive data and to comply with regulation. Another issue we have to deal with when it comes to data is data compliance. So organization must comply with a variety of regulation and standard related to data. And some of these regulations could be national, like in the US, and some of them could be international. Like think of HIPAA, H-I, PPA. And what is HIPAA? It's the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. And you need to know more and more about HIPAA when it comes to the CPA exam. Basically, making sure the information of the imp of the patient is protected uh, from breaches, security breaches, and privacy issues. We also have something called GD. PR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation. Well, here we're talking about rules that even are implemented or followed in Europe. So you have to comply with that because once you're on the internet, you're everywhere. And obviously socks in the US, which can be difficult to navigate. So your data must be in compliance. So these regulations and standards set guidelines of how organization must handle and protect personal and sensitive information data, as well as how they must report data breaches in case something happened. That's important. I know a lawyer, I met a lawyer recently that deals with this. The data breaches happen much, much more often than we think, uh, but we don't know about it because businesses never, ever, you never, ever know about the data breach because for reputational purposes, companies don't want you to know. You only know about these breaches when it's a publicly traded company because the information has to be public. Many, many private companies are subject to those data breaches and they go unnoticed. Also, non-compliance with these regulations can result in hefty penalties, hefty penalties, hefty fines, and reputational damage. That's the worst type of damage. To tackle these challenges, the organization can implement data compliance processes, such as data mapping, data classification, and incident report planning. What, what's, what's data, what is data mapping? Involve identifying which data is sensitive, that's stored, and how. You, it can be used throughout the organization. So not all data is equal. Certain data is more important than other. We'll talk about data mapping later on as well. Data classification involve assigning different level of protection to different types of data based on their sensitivity. So after you map it, you classify it, and you implement the right security measure for this data. Incident response, what does that mean? It means planning involve developing procedures for how to respond to data breaches or other incidents. So something happened. Well, we have to have certain procedures on how to respond, how to how to contain the incidents, how to notify the affected parties, which could be very, you know, very uh, not, not a happy incident for them, and how to perform forensic investigation to see what happened and prevent that from happening again. Also, the organization can establish data compliance governance rules, such as data protection officers or compliance managers to help ensure data compliance is consistent and monitored. Another important aspect to consider is to have regular training and awareness for the employees. Make sure they understand which data is sensitive, which data is top secret, which data is important, which data is everyone can use to ensure they're aware of regulations and the company policies. And this will help ensure that the employees understand the responsibilities and the risk associated with this data. Another issue related to compliance and security is data privacy. 
With the increasing amount of data being collected, stored, and shared, organization must be able to protect the privacy of individual and ensure their data being used in a responsible and ethical manner. Data privacy is a complex issue because it involves the balancing benefit of data use against the need to protect personal information. So organization, they must demonstrate transparency and accountability on how they collect, use, and share the data. And this is an important concept or important topic for a company like Google. To tackle data privacy, organization can implement data privacy processes such as data minimization and data retention. What is data minimization? It means collect the data that you only need for a specific purpose, no more, no less. So therefore, you limit the amount of data that's being collected and stored. And data retention means setting policies for how long you keep this data and when it's deleted. Sometimes you have to delete it by law. Also, organization can establish data privacy governance roles such as data privacy officers or privacy managers to help make sure that data privacy is consistent, monitored, and maintained. Another aspect to consider is a comprehensive data policy that covers data collection. How do I get the data? How do I store it? And how do I share it? This would also help ensure the organization is transparent in its handling practices and to comply with the relevant data privacy. Data governance structure is ensuring that the data governance is properly aligned with the overall goals and objective of the organization. How do you make sure that's the case? Well, you want to make sure you're assigning the proper resources while having enough staff. That staff is properly trained. You have a budget to effectively implement and maintain the data governance program because you want to have data govern, but if governance, but if you don't provide the money, the people, the resources, then you can't do it. So without adequate resources, it will be very difficult to achieve the goals of data governance program. You also have to have adequate participation from management, buy-in, from stockholders, they have to adopt this, getting the support of key decision makers, data owners, and other stake stakeholders who play a role in data governance. Think about if the owners of the data don't want to release the data, then there's nothing you can do. So you want to convince them it's a good idea to have a comprehensive policy. Without these people's support, it can be very difficult to implement and maintain effective data governance process. Also, data governance complexity. Why? Because you might have multiple business areas and data types, which mean different governance processes, roles, responsibility may be required. Think of companies that buy other companies. They grow through acquisition. They grow through consolidation. So they could have all sorts of data. And how are you going to collect this data, make it uniform, clean it, make sense out of it? So it is a challenge. Why? Because you might have different governance process in each company and to consolidate this it may not be an easy process data governance scalability and automation so as the amount of data generated by a company grows it can be increasingly difficult to maintain effective data governance so the, the, the bigger it gets it's going to be harder and harder to maintain unless you have a good governance structure this include being able to handle this increased volume velocity and variety of data and when you have the V, V, and V, as well as being able to scale the data governance process and system to meet the organization changing need. And that's why it's important to have a framework because the framework would help you whether you have uh, 10 gigabyte or 10,000 gigabytes of data. It's all, this also include being able to adapt to new data sources. Your data will change over time. So for example, you're, you're getting the data from one source and it's in a certain way, the source might change or the same source could start to provide the data in a different way, such as the internet of things and artificial intelligence, which can introduce new challenges and complexity. Because think about it, if you're collecting a data from a website, from the internet, if that internet page, that internet structure changes, then the data you are collecting will change. How would you handle that? Again, you have to automate the process. Automating the data governance can help organization to manage large amount of data, but it requires a significant investment in technologies and the right skills to implement it. It's not easy. So as the data grows, you're going to have challenges. So as the data grows, what is your key response? Have a good governance structure and automate the process. We're going to be talking much, much more about data. There's much more, many, many more topics to discuss. Make sure you understand these topics in bits and pieces. Go to Farhat Lectures and look at MCQs that deals with this topic to help you understand it before you move on. Whether you are a CPA candidate, CMA candidate, 
CISA candidate or accounting information system. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.